Welcome to Safe Point, a show on the internet where we talk about video game news and topics that you suggest to us on YouTube and on Twitter using the hashtag Safe Point. My name is Ryan Shepard. And I'm Nick Rubio, and welcome to our show. And welcome to our show again. Uh, three times now. Three and times? Yeah. yeah, I okay. Yeah. Um, Nick, just take us somewhere. We're going to read a topic and answer. Jesus. Twitch a sort. Yeah, Twitch okay. Twitchosaurus Rex. I, I got confused because I said twi... I don't know. It looks so, weird. So Twatorexus... My, no, that's not it. No. This is from uh, that's, YouTube? Yeah, that's on YouTube. YouTube? Okay. <clears throat> Question for your save point. This is our show. Yeah. Do you have a rant on microtransactions? Personally, I'm all for the way that they do it on Steam with how it doesn't prevent you from progressing in the game. And honestly, you can profit from it. How how likely do you think this will catch up or trend on mobile phones likely to dominate the microtransaction future? Um, yeah, I mean, I agree. Uh, especially when you're talking about games on Steam, for instance, like uh, Counter-Strike Go, where a big part of the game mm -hmm. is the gun skins. Like, there's a huge community around it, and people go crazy for this. There are gun skins that go up $300, $400. Mm -hmm. I am not joking. It's the same with Dota. Yeah, and the same thing with, with items in Dota. So, on, on the whole, Steam does a pretty good job. As opposed to uh, freemium games on mobile where you get to play for an hour. And if you want to play for an hour, uh, again, you have to wait a day or just spend $5. Like, they deal it out to you like crack cocaine. Pretty much. Yeah, the, the whole... And the good thing about the Steam community and mm -hmm. how you said it's all built up around... These are people creating these things. And Steam only takes a small cut of the actual transaction. So when you buy someone's created you know piece on Counter-Strike or Dota, you are supporting that person directly. Mm -hmm. They are getting money for that. You know what right. I mean? So it's like... It's not such a... It's the, it makes the community feel more whole as opposed to like... When you're paying for like microtransactions for like a phone game, you're mm -hmm. you're supporting some shitty developer who blatantly ripped off this Angry Birds game. Well, I mean, even when it is a good example, it's kind of unfortunate because the culture or or basically just the general view of mobile games is that they're free or you're stupidly wasting your money. Like, I mean, and I'm guilty of it as much as anyone. When I go on the like the Play Store on my Android phone. <laughs> What? I just felt like they were like advertising a slow product placement. Um, <laughs> like, and I see a game on there, like, oh, this looks pretty cool. And four bucks? Oh, what? Who the fuck do they think they are? And you know it's happening to you too. There, there are a few times, but like, some, sometimes if the game looks really good or if I hear good things about mm -hmm. it, then, then I'll, I'll, you know, I'll fork out the money for it. But I'd rather, I'd rather. I'd rather, if it came between the two, I'd rather have to pay for a game up front and that be it. Than right, always I, I, I would too, game. but uh, there's another problem with it and it's visibility. Mm -hmm. There are millions of apps on whether you're on iTunes or on the Google Play Store. I don't know about Windows. There's like five on the Windows Play yeah. Store. There's great visibility there. <laughs> but uh, the problem is, is to get visibility in these uh, stores, you have to get a lot of downloads. And it's hard to get the number of downloads you need to have visibility if you charge for your game. Now, if you put a game out for free and you put out like a light version, for instance, or you put out a freemium game where it's free, but basically useless unless you start having to uh, pay for you know small in-game transactions, then people just won't see you. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, that's a big part of it. But, I mean, there is something very, I don't know, manipulative about how they go about it. They do the way it works is you get this small little taste and they they give you small small charges like oh it's only a dollar to play for another hour that's not a big deal boom and then you spend it and there are people who have spent thousands of dollars on these mobile games and and I feel like big companies like mobile companies like Apple and Google and stuff like that have mm -hmm. had to really think hard about how they handle this because they're losing millions for it like you, you just heard about how Apple and both Google have both Google just had to settle out of, out of court yeah. for 19 million dollars for people for children who will get their parents devices and will buy things because they don't fucking know any better they're kids and they're and yeah. it's a t and because you buy a game on you know the Play Store and the uh, Apple Store, I guess. Yeah, iTunes. iTunes. Uh, it, your card's attached to it. It has to be attached to it. So, and all of a sudden, you've you know you've got kids buying all these things, and they're losing all this money for it. You know. Well, yeah, now because they've had to pay out on it, mm -hmm. but now um, uh, most apps do have like a lock feature where you can put parental settings on them. Mm -hmm. But uh, as far as it changing, I don't know. I mean, I think a couple of things would have to happen in order for we, us to see any sort of significant change. Um, one, I think there needs to be a higher barrier to entry on the app stores. Like, I hate to say it, but 
because everyone can get in, no one can get seen. That's just a simple way it works. Is on Steam, it's a little bit easier to get garbage games put on Steam now, but at least there's still somewhat of a process. Yeah, you you have you have to deceive a lot of people to make it look like it. And I mean, don't get me wrong, there is an approval process with both Android and Apple. Um, but the problem is, is that they just check for like, is it appropriate? Mm-hmm. You know, I'm pretty sure they don't even have people actually physically test it. Yeah, it's like bots. Like, oh, this said, like this mentions sex in the game, so mm-hmm. they nip it. Like. So, um, yeah, how we look at the games would have to change. Uh, the visibility on the markets would have to change. Um, and I think the part that makes it difficult is with Counter-Strike, for instance, or with Dota, it, there's a large social element. Like, you buy a cool gun so people see that you have a cool gun. It's not for you. It's so mm-hmm. other people see how cool your gun skin is. Mm-hmm. But on mobile games, you don't usually have that level of interaction. Because mm-hmm. if you do, you're like typing out messages. There's not much voiceover support or anything. So I like in Dota too how um, they have announcer packs. Mm-hmm. And like if you buy an announcer pack, you can share that with people in the game so they can also use it. You know what I mean? Like cause normally when you, when you just start off in a vanilla game and you put on your announcer pack, nobody does. They can't hear it, but you can. But if right. they go in there, they can also use it. So I think that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, hopefully it'll change for the better in the future. I mean, especially with, like, you know, bigger and better processors in the mobile phones. They can do more. They can have better quality games. Uh, bigger studios in the mobile market, like... Um, Republic. God, uh, yeah, that one. But, God, who is Tim Schafer's company? Uh, I almost said Grim Fandango, but that's not his company. No, Double that's Fine. A game. Double yeah, Fine. Double Fine. Yeah. They, 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 uh, Cave Story. Is that Cave Story is the one I'm thinking of? I think that's the one that they yeah, put that's, out there. Yeah, that's also on... Uh, Cave Story is also on mobile and um, the DS. I mean. Anyway, I feel like we talked about that way too long. It was I'm a rant. Sorry. He asked for a rant. We, he or she. She asked for a rant. I actually she? do know it is a oh, she. Oh, okay. She asked okay, for a rant. Um, so this one comes from uh, Akito or Akito FTW Gaming. I assume that's for the win and not fuck the world. <laughs> uh, you guys should talk about how the U.S. government uh, is demanding data from Microsoft and other companies and saying it's theirs, even though it really isn't. I didn't know that they were actually saying that it was theirs. I I, I, I never heard about it being yeah. a product of, of like ownership. I, I mean, think it was entitlement. Like we have, we have a right to this data. I'm I don't know. I, I haven't read that particular article mm-hmm. that maybe this person is referring to. Um, what I have seen though is is that they have been asking for stuff like that, and yes. it's it. I, I can understand. Okay, so when you play a game, you sign an end user license agreement. Yeah. Like the U, the EULA. Everybody's seen one. You, whether you knew what the fuck it was or not, you press accept. Mm-hmm. So when you do that for most games, all the stuff that you do in online games is not yours. It's all the company who is providing you the service. It's, it's theirs. Right. You know what I mean? So like, say World of Warcraft, for instance. When you make a character in World of Warcraft and you put all your hours of time into that character, but you do something that's worth a bannable offense... That is also that they can take that away from you, and you can't do anything right. about that. I mean, and there's reasons why it has to be that way mm-hmm. because, I mean, so say you did own your character in World of Warcraft. Here's a USB drive. Let's see you use it. Yeah, like, <laughs> well, here's the yeah, that's the exact thing is is if you had the rights to your character and you stopped paying for your subscription, like they would have to somehow give you your character. Like, I don't even know how that would work. Like, I own that character, and that character is in that game. So, what are we gonna do here? <laughs> I need to have access to that character somehow. I own it. As far as the U.S. government wanting, uh, you know, data from these companies, I mean, in certain cases, I can see where they can ask for it and, you know, sort of not be, you know, like it's kind of shitty for the company to deny the, you know what I mean? Like if somebody's sending bomb threats through a video game, you know, they should help the government because we don't want bomb threats to be sent through this medium. In that case, it's usually fine, too, I think, because it's usually, like, in a public game. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, when you're talking about the Skype app on the Xbox, like, Mm -hmm. the idea of them recording or or somehow using a captured... uh, Because that was something that was talked about a couple months ago. That, I think, is bad. Like, any sort of circumstance where you are at least given some sort of assurance that it's a private communication should not be susceptible to listening ears. Mm-hmm. You know, like, because like, that's just not right. Like, people have a right to privacy. It's the same thing with, with I don't want to get off, too off topic too much, but, like, who polices this? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it, like it's like the, the police police themselves. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they, they investigate themselves. So, so who's to say that this... You know, in a perfect world, mm-hmm. yes, I can I can see that being okay. Where yeah. they can go in and, and they're hunting specifically people, but what's to stop some guy being bored and saying, 
Well, these two, this, this person's nude, and they're obviously doing something, so I want to watch this. Because... Well, yeah, speaking of that, like, yeah. I, I didn't read the article myself, but I heard several people mention an article about NSA agents, like, being caught exchanging nudes that they found. Mm-hmm. Like, like them finding nude photographs, and then, like, trading it amongst themselves. Like, it's some kind of fucking fucked up Pokemon game. Like, the biggest problem is, is with anything, even if it's a government agency is still comprised of people. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So in sometimes people, they want to look at other people naked without them knowing. So, I don't know. Stuff like that is kind of iffy. Yeah, so that, that, that's our stance. It's bad. Yeah. It shouldn't be done. But in some circumstances, it's... It's, it's okay, it's, it's yeah. Okay. I hope that answers your question. Thank you. This also for, this is also from YouTube, correct? No, Derek, this one's from Facebook. Is it? Oh, yeah, the little uh, thumbs Like up. button. I didn't see the little thumbs up. <clears throat> Derek Bunt. Yeah, Bunt. Are video games and cinema becoming one and the same? In the 90s, there were there was digitalizing. Now there's Quantic Dream, who have been leading the video game development and creation of cinematic-style video games, such as titles as Heavy Rain, Beyond Two Souls, etc. With uh, with upcoming games like Silent Hills from Hideo Kojima and Guillermo del Toro, the well-famed horror director featuring Norman Reedus serving as a character model for one of the game's protagonists, much like Ellen Page and Willem Dafoe in Beyond Two Souls. Uh... We ha- we're starting to see this evolving trend in video game field. Um, my personal I feel about this is mm. not necessarily is it becoming more like movies. Mm-hmm. I think it's just gaining so much exposure where we can acquire creative minds. Because yes, okay, this person, Yaro Tom is a video game director. Mm-hmm. But he is a create a brilliant creative person. Yeah. And... and Who's to say whether he can have some sort of impact on a game like Silent Hill? Like, he can. Just because he films and stuff doesn't mean he can't have input that would help yeah. games. You know what I mean? Well, I think it's more of a problem in the context of And we've talked about this before. It's more like games like Gone Home mm-hmm. or games, I would even say maybe even the Telltale games, where um, it's very narrative-driven mm-hmm. and it's not nearly as interactive as other games. Mm-hmm. Like, it's very on rails. Mm-hmm. And, and in that sense, some games are very movie-like in that... Like, okay, I think uh, Beyond Two Souls is another good example. Is you're involved, but a large part of the game is sitting back and watching what happens. Mm-hmm. And it is sort of a growing trend. I think it has a place in games, but it would be a sad state of affairs if that became the norm. Yeah, I don't, think, I don't necessarily think it's going to become the norm. Because yeah. as far as I know, yes, there are games like Myst and you know uh, yeah. uh, gone home and but like quantum dream or they are a, a studio and yeah. they that's what they do and they've always done it and you know thank god they've never deviated because they stick to their guns they know yeah. what they do and you know games like indigo prophecy and 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 beyond two beyond two souls and um heavy, heavy rain. rain those games have done a lot for video game community because a yeah. lot of people have really enjoyed them so I don't necessarily see it becoming a huge, huge trend because this is the only studio that I can think of that does right. specifically this. You know yeah. what I mean? Like when we start seeing, we start seeing Activision or or Bethesda start doing stuff like that. Then it's yeah. then it's worrying. Yeah, yeah, and and I think it's when it becomes the blockbuster titles, and that's never happened. A, a blockbuster game has never really been a sit back and watch game. Like you have like games like Destiny, which just came out. You know, the Call of Duty titles, uh, any of the Madden sports games or FIFA, these are very involved games. I these can't are imagine movies. playing a Madden game that you'd like. <laughs> yeah, you just sit there, like, like, like. It's like, just watching football. Wait, <laughs> is this not just watching football? No, it's Madden. Like, so, so, um, as, as far as that goes, yeah, I don't think it's going to be too much of a problem. I think there's a place for it, and it would suck if it became, like, a major thing, mm-hmm. but where it is now, I think, is okay. You know, for the most part. Yeah, I, I feel like it has its place, and it's. I, I don't see it encroaching on dangerous territory. Yeah. But anyway, thank you so much for submitting those questions. Uh, if you enjoyed the conversation, please like the video, subscribe to our channel if you haven't already, uh, and su- suggest us some topics for next time, because look, this bowl's empty now, and uh, that makes me very uh, sad, and I sometimes uh, want to hurt other people when I'm sad. So help us buy medication for Ryan. <laughs> and, uh, well, thank you for joining us, and we'll catch you next time. Uh, I'd also like to say um, a special happy birthday message to our friend Mark. Oh, yeah? yeah cardiac sumo. He, uh, happy turned, birthday, man. He turned 21. Good luck. Mm-hmm. I wasn't there for it. Sad story. Sad story. Bye. <laughs>